Zwift has reimagined and redefined riding indoors, and a host of new smart trainers has brought virtual riding to life. This new breed of electronic trainer allows third-party apps like Zwift, Trainer Road, and the Sufferfest to wirelessly control the resistance, which can replicate hills and headwinds and also guide you through power-based interval workouts with lab-like precision. In this video, we'll walk you through 10 of the best smart trainers on the market today, including models from Wahoo, Tax, Elite, Cyclops, and Kinetic. I tested each of these on Zwift and against a few different power meters. First of all, what the heck is a smart trainer? It's a piece of equipment you connect to your bike to keep you from losing your damn mind when riding inside. Now, smart here means two-way communication on speed, power, and often cadence between apps on your phone, computer, or tablet, and the smart trainer. Most importantly, it means that apps can control the resistance of the trainer. So when you come to a virtual hill or the start of a hard workout, the trainer adjusts automatically, making it more difficult to pedal. Smart trainers work on cycling standard wireless ant plus frequency and on Bluetooth, which is native for many modern smartphones and laptops. To use a smart trainer, you need your bike, a computer, phone, or tablet, Wi-Fi, and most crucially, a big fan. If your computer or your phone doesn't have Bluetooth, you'll need a little ant plus USB dongle. There are two types of smart trainers. Wheel-on smart trainers are less expensive and look and operate similarly to a traditional trainer where you clamp your bike at the axle and the tire. Direct drive trainers require that you remove your wheel and install a cassette on the trainer and then mount the bike on the trainer. Wheel-on smart trainers are your least expensive option. The major cons against them are the warm-up time needed to calibrate and the fact that the power measurement accuracy generally isn't quite as good as direct drive. But wheel-on trainers are pretty easy to use and they don't require an additional cassette. Although heavy, they're lighter than the direct drive trainers, and most of them fold up for storage and for transport. By removing your rear wheel and the tire from the equation, you also remove some of the hassle and the inaccuracy of the wheel-on model. When you take your bike off and on, you don't need to do a warm-up before a calibration. You can just get on and go with good data all the while. Within the direct drive category, spinning more means less noise, slightly better power accuracy, and conveniences like pop-off legs versus bolted legs. At the top end, the Tax Neo has a cool surface feature that replicates things like cobbles and dirt as you ride virtual courses. The Wahoo Snap is an excellent wheel-on trainer. Setup is easy right out of the box with the fold-out legs and intuitive handles for the rear axle and the tire. As with any wheel-on trainer, once you have adequate resistance, you can just hop on and start riding. But you want to calibrate it for better power accuracy. This means doing a 10-minute spin to warm up the tire then doing a quick spin down for the calibration. The Snap is nice because you can do the spin down with the Wahoo app or just right inside Zwift. Testing against Pioneer and Garmin Vector 3 power meters simultaneously, I found the Snap's power measurement to be very good, at least within 2% variation of the power meters. As with most wheel-on designs, there's a slight lag in the power reading for initial hard accelerations as the power is measured behind the flywheel. This can be a little frustrating for virtual races, but on the upside, that measured power continues for the same total duration as you applied it, there's just a little bit of a lag. Speaking of the flywheel, the 10.5 pound, 4.8 kilo weight adds to the great road feel overall of the trainer. Your tire won't slip on the drum and the steady adjustable tripod design won't rock on the floor. Some users have found that they're snapped to vibrate at high speeds, but I did not experience that. I also normally use a pad underneath the trainers. The Wahoo Kicker Snap is the quietest wheel-on smart trainer that I have tested, both at steady power and at max output. The Tax Vortex is also easy to set up, with a steady feel and instant changes in virtual gradient resistance. I found the power readings to be consistent, but also about 10-12% to 12 high compared to the averages of the Pioneer and the Vector 3 power meters. For all power testing, I calibrated each of the meters and the smart trainers before each test. As with the Snap, the Vortex has a slight delay in acceleration, but you're not being robbed of measurement, just slightly deferred. The price, especially in the UK, is great for a smart trainer. If you're looking for the most inexpensive smart trainer on the market, then the Elite Quobo Digital Smart B Plus is it. You can usually find it even lower than the list price on Wiggle and Performance. It's the lightest of the bunch and super easy to set up. Unlike the other wheel-on trainers that clamp the roller to your tire, the Quobo relies on your weight for the resistance at the tire. The main trade-off for the price and convenience is the accuracy of the power. It reads high at lower power and low at high power. So I wouldn't recommend this for anyone looking to do very specific power training, but it does deliver the virtual experience, changing resistance to mirror the virtual conditions. If you get this one, I would definitely recommend turning the trainer difficulty setting up to high. It is also the loudest of the bunch.
Okay, so this isn't a trainer, but it's super cool. The Elite Arion Digital Smart B Plus Rollers set combines the interactivity of a smart trainer with the freedom of movement of a set of rollers. As with the Elite Quobo, these rollers aren't that accurate in terms of power measurement, and there is a resistance ceiling of about 400 watts, depending on the virtual grade. But the rollers do offer a fundamentally unique way to experience virtual riding. During all this smart trainer testing, I find myself gravitating back to these just because they're a lot of fun to ride. The Arion's power reads high at low power and low at high power. And above 400 watts, you're just not getting any love. So, two scenarios here. One, if you're just wanting an engaging ride and you don't care about power data, this is a great option. Two, if you like the idea of interactive rollers and you already are a power data nerd with a power meter, just use your power meter for the wattage measurement and the trainer for the interactivity. Halfway in between the freewheeling rollers and a fixed smart trainer, you have the Kinetic Rock and Roll Smart. This big green machine clamps your rear axle on the tire, but then lets the whole mechanism move both side to side and even a little bit up and down. It's a unique trainer for sure. Kinetic claims that the design gives you some of the benefits of riding rollers, such as core strength and stability, through engaging more muscles, but without the possibility of falling off. Some fans of Kinetic also say that the design can help reduce or eliminate saddle sores you might get with a normal trainer because the bike is allowed to move somewhat with you. The power measurement is okay, but not great. While total measurement was within 3% of the power meters on average, it reads high on low power and low on high power. As with the Elite Rollers, the selling point here is an interactive tool that can adjust resistance at the command of your favorite apps, but lets you move more than on a fixed trainer. After doing a calibration with the Tax app, I found the Tax Flux to measure power really well, within 2% of the Pioneer, Shimano, and Garmin averages, with relatively consistent tracking and the ability to catch quick jumps and spikes in power. The legs bolt into place, so you'll need a dedicated space for it, but the design is rock solid. Its max power is only 1500 watts, but I'd like to see the rider who can top that on a fixed trainer inside. For more relevance to Zwift riders, the gradient simulation tops out at 10%, which is the lowest of the direct drive trainers. Going head to head with the flux on price is the new Elite Dorito, which I found to have great power measurement right out of the box, tracking within a single percent of the Pioneer and Garmin power meters. As with the flux, the tripod base is rock solid for stability. The legs pivot in for storage using a big dial on each leg to loosen and tighten. The feel is steady and smooth for both virtual riding and interval training. My one complaint is the stutter and required power when reactivating erg mode. Erg mode, which is when the app is controlling the resistance, gets deactivated when you can't match the required power for a few seconds. When the Dredo senses this, it releases the heavy resistance and lets you spin for a while. Then, once you get going again, it will reactivate. The only problem is with the Dredo, there's a stutter of about 450 watts or so before it settles back into the preset power. The Dredo is quiet at steady power and under hard efforts. Max power is 1400 watts and the max gradient is 14%. Cyclops has been making power meters longer than anybody but SRM, so it should be no surprise that the measurement on the Cyclops hammer is pretty spot on. I measured it within 2% of the Pioneer and Vector meters with very consistent behavior. The hammer and also the Wahoo Kicker are a level up from the Dredo and the Flux in terms of price and features. The hammer has legs that pop out and adjust for height, plus a little wheel tray that tucks into the feet for storage. The hammer is rock solid at the base with the tripod design and also rock solid at the axle, so the trainer and the bike are fully rigid. Whether that's a good thing or not is a matter of personal preference. The hammer is a tiny bit louder at steady state than the other direct drive trainers, and definitely louder when going full gas. Maximum replicated slope is 20% and maximum power is 2000 watts. Good luck with both of those. While CompuTrainer was the first interactive trainer, the Wahoo Kicker was the first interactive trainer to operate on an open platform. As such, it still has a lead in how it plays well with others. It is easy to use with all the major apps, and your phone, and your computer, and your Garmin, and of course the Wahoo Element head units. Power-wise, the kicker tracks along gratifyingly well with power meters, and in fact can be calibrated to your power meter of choice, if you so choose. With a heavy flywheel and an electromagnetic brake, the feel is excellent, and the trainer is quiet at all speeds. The kicker with the kicker is its controlled power. Some will love it and some will find that a little bit weird. When doing controlled intervals, the kick will report that its controlled power and your actual power are eerily close, delivering bar graph-like results in your wattage reports. On one hand, this can be gratifying to see. On the other hand, there's no way you're actually holding power that smoothly. But in either case, the kicker plays well with others, delivers a quiet and buttery smooth ride, and although heavy like the rest, it's relatively easy to move thanks to a big handle and legs that pop out and pop in. Okay, now for the flashiest of them all, the Tax Neo. 
Looking like a spaceship off the set of Star Wars, the Neo lights up the ground with colors coded to your level of effort. Laser light show aside, the Neo's real magic lies in its electromagnetic interface. With a varied series of short stutters, the Neo can replicate the feel and, even to some extent, the sound of riding over cobbles, dirt roads, loose boards, and more. It's hard to show this in the video, but the feeling is surprisingly good, as the feedback comes mostly at the pedals. The Neo also has a cool feature where you get a bit of a boost on downhills. If you coast while on a downhill in virtual riding, then start to pedal again, on most trainers you get a bit of a resistance at first. With the Neo, the pedals turn as easy as pie, just like they would outside. And of course, the Neo reacts to adjust resistance for uphills and guided power workouts. Another plus, it doesn't have to be plugged into work. There are only two problems with the Neo. One, the cost. And two, there's really no way to calibrate the thing. Tax claims that its system comes perfectly adjusted and requires no calibration. That may be the case, but I was frustrated to see that while the power readings were very consistent and tracked along with the power meters, they are always just under 10 watts below the calibrated power meters that I used for the testing. So which of these is the best? Well, like with any tool, that depends on your budget, your intended use, and your preferences. All of these do a great job bringing virtual riding to life. The more money you spend, the better experience you get. For power measurement though, there are clearly two classes of smart trainers. The direct drive trainers are markedly better than the wheel on options. If you already have a power meter, I would recommend using that for your measurement. Connect your meter to Zwift or Trainer Road or whatever app you're using for the power measurement, and then connect the smart trainer for the resistance control. I'd advise that even with the direct drive trainers, just so you're seeing the same consistent numbers inside and outside. The best bang for the buck has got to be the new Elite Diretto. It works very well at under a grand. The absolute cheapest smart trainer is the Elite Quobo, but I'd recommend that you pony up a little more and get the Tax Vortex for a good wheel-on smart trainer. The most fun to ride are the Elite Arion Rollers and the Tax Neo. The Arion's power measurement is poor, but hey, virtual rollers, that's cool. The Cyclops Hammer is an excellent option with a smooth road feel and a forgiving algorithm for when you stall out on erg mode. It is rock solid and easy to use. It's just a little louder than the other top end trainers. The title for best overall smart trainer is a tightly contested battle between the Wahoo Kicker and the Tax Neo. I highly recommend both. The Neo's surface treatments engage you like no other trainer can, and its power measurements are hyper dependable. The fold out wings are rock solid, but the hub has a bit of give, which I appreciate. You can even use it without power, although you don't get the cool downhill assist feature that way. My only hesitation is that the Neo's power is always just a few watts below that of power meters. I should note that the hammer measures similarly. And in both cases, you can chalk up the delta in power to the drivetrain efficiency losses. You can absolutely train with confidence to the Neo and the hammer. Just note that the Neo is not compatible with long cage derailers. And finally, the kicker. You can't feel the cobbles here, but you do get a quiet, silky smooth virtual experience with dependable power. Unlike the hammer and the Neo, I found the kicker's reported power to nearly mirror that of my power meters. It's the easiest direct drive trainer to live with too, with a compact design that folds in quickly, a sturdy handle, and full compatibility with through axle bikes and all lengths of rear derailleur cages. Hopefully this video helps give you a lay of the land with smart trainers. For more detail on any of these trainers, including the wattage graphs and comparisons to the power meters, head on over to bikeradar.com to read my reviews of each one. Maybe we'll see each other on Zwift this winter. Look for the gray haired guy in the bike radar kit and be sure to give me a wave as you go by. There's no bike throwing Zwift. You know, <laughs>